Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. It is Saturday and this is the beginning of a backyard renovation update video. Yay! It's been a while since we've had one because our work schedule in the backyard has kind of shifted from uh, like destruction and construction to more toward maintenance and just putting plants in the ground. So, but today we are getting underway with um, finishing the removal of the sod behind the arbor. So let me give you a peek. Okay, so here we are. We're in, there's the arbor right there. And we're behind the arbor now. And so I've cut the edge of the path. We're gonna leave this grass path. Uh, we're trying to decide, Dave wants to leave it grass. I'm not convinced yet, but we'll see. And then it goes over there as well. And so what we're doing is we're getting this section behind the path up against uh, those trees, getting that sod out. So we've already cut this sod out and we've laid down compost here and we're working our way across that way. So I wanted to just give you a very quick and easy um, overview of how I remove sod and you can have a different method and that's fine, but this is what I do. Okay, so for me, oh my gosh, the cicadas. They're, I'm gonna have to get closer so you can hear me. I don't have my other equipment on right now. Okay, so for what I like to do, you, first of all, you gotta make sure that your grass, your sod is wet, moist. It, if it's dry and hard, at least on our soil, it's impossible to remove. So we've already watered this down. Dig out. I've already cut, oh God, cicadas. <laughs> if you stand still for more than five seconds, the cicadas think you're a tree and they land on you. Um, anyway, so I've already cut the edge, and to do that, I used this. Half moon spade to cut the edge, and then here's what I do once that part, once that edge is cut. I use my little half-size shovel. Got this handle on the end, which is so helpful. And so to remove the sod, all I do is I put my, oops, I put my point in the grass, and I tuck it in an inch or two, and then just kind of that action, and away it goes. So if it's moist, it's fairly simple to do. I mean, it's still a workout, but out it goes. Now, this method does take out like two or three inches of soil, which for us is fine because this soil is not really all that great quality, and we're putting compost on top. So that's it. Just stick it in there. And then you kind of shimmy it underneath. I like this shovel because it gives me this handle right here. And it's perfect size for me. And with that, our method today is that the amount of time it takes me to fill a five gallon bucket full of sod is just about the same amount of time that it takes Dave to carry this bucket down to the compost pile fill it up with compost and bring it back. So we've got this assembly line going and it's working out pretty well. A uh, couple more things to mention about this. One, um, some of the sod, if it's nice grass without too many weeds and a nice thick patch, we're actually lifting it and we're planting it in other spots of our yard that need grass put in. But some of the sod, if it's very weedy or if it's sparse or if it's just bad grass, uh, we're just dumping it over on our hill. We've got a section set up where we're kind of building up um, a little bit of the soil area and so we're just piling all of this stuff it's got um you know grass mixed in and, and dirt and all that and over time it'll it'll build up a berm over there so that's one thing i wanted to mention the other thing is hey look at my hat uh my friends at the uh sweet adeline's chorus that i direct gave me this as a gift they took my logo off of my youtube channel and my facebook page and they made me a nice hat. So I love it and I'm grateful. Thank you. It keeps the uh, sun off of my freshly colored hair so it doesn't ruin my color job. And also it keeps the sun out of my eyes and the sweat off of my forehead. So I love it and I'm grateful. So anyway, back to moving sod. So we made wonderful progress today. We got all the sod removed from the planting area back here behind the arbor. And the next thing is for uh, the mulch to be spread. and. Um, so let me just give you a quick look before the mulch goes in. Okay, so here we are behind the arbor and uh, we are leaving the grass in place for a little while for the path. We may pull it out, we may leave it in, I'm not sure. Sorry about the loud cicadas. So um, yeah, this is starting to really be the vision that I had in my head. 
with this kind of secret garden little, um, well, it's not so secret because the plants aren't big enough to hide it yet here or here, but uh, a little private garden back here behind this arbor. Um, and so you can see now very clearly that the path splits and goes left and right. Uh, right about there where that spot is of sun right there, that's where I'm going to put a climbing rose onto a wooden obelisk, which I have in my dining room right now waiting to be put together. Uh, the rose is mail ordered and it should be shipping on Monday or sometime this week. So fingers crossed it'll be here not too long. So the rose will be here on a, a triangular shaped obelisk and then other plants in here um, need to still go in and we still have lots of planting area over here as well. Lots of space to put in fun and interesting things. Um, when you go to the right on this pathway, it kind of just dead ends right now in a little pile of weeds, which I need to pull out. Um, and this is primarily why I don't know if I want to keep the grass because I don't know how to finish it. How, where, how do you end it? because I don't want any grass over in here. So we need to figure out if we keep the grass, how does it end? Right now it's just a little stumpy dead end, um, but it takes you over into this area, which also has a lot of room for development um, and the hammock there. And then when you go this way on the path, it takes you around to the back gate. So um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. It's got about two or three inches of uh, compost on the top of the soil and uh next is just to put in some mulch do you hear those cicadas do you hear them they're so loud oh my god Okay, this area is complete. All we have to do now is plant in it. We got all the mulch spread. Well, I think we need one little five gallon bucket of mulch to touch up a little spot back by the fence, but it's looking really good. Let me show you. Here it is. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm not happy with the way this grass ends over there though, but it's all good. It's all good. We'll figure it out. Look how nice this looks. Oh. What a difference from what we had just like two months ago. None of this was here two months ago. It was just this oh, wasteland back here almost. Oh, goodness. Oh, what a difference. Oh, I can totally see it coming together now. Now that we have the back garden all ready for planting, um, I'm trying to choose where to put some new shrubs that I have. Let me show you what I have. These are the four types of shrubs that I purchased via mail order from Proven Winners Direct. I have one Instant Karma Elderberry. It's got variegated foliage and it's beautiful foliage and it gets to be six to eight feet tall and wide. So it's a really, really beautiful foliage and it will have flowers and hopefully berries. And the reason it'll have berries is because I also have this laced up elderberry and they will fertilize each other, I think. Laced up is a dark colored lace leaf elderberry, but it, it is a space saver. So it gets six to 10 feet tall and two to four feet wide. So it'll be in a shape of a column. This will be more of a ball, six to eight feet ball. And this will be uh, six to 10 feet tall, two to three feet wide or two to four, something like that. So uh, dark lacy foliage, variegated foliage. And so uh, they're both gonna be stunners in the garden, I think just got to sight them nicely. Next, I got three of these Arctic Fire Red Twig Dogwoods, and they, I believe, are three to five feet tall and wide. Is that right? Yes. And this is uh, the main reason I got them is for this winter interest uh, with the red stems. So uh, they want, I believe, sun to part shade. Yep. Uh, all of these are sun to part shade, actually, I think. Yep. This one might want full sun. Nope, sun to part shade. This is a proud berry, coral berry, with pink berries in the fall. And 
three to four feet tall and wide, so the same size as the Arctic Fires, and sun to part shade. So they all can take part shade, which is good because that's what they're all getting. Three to four feet wide, three to five feet wide, uh, two to four feet wide, but six to 10 feet tall, and six to eight feet tall and wide. So, all right, this is a column. These are balls, and this is big, six to eight feet, and these are small, three to four, three to five. And this is a column. So knowing that, I'm trying to find the right placement for them in the backyard. One of my most important considerations for this backyard renovation is trying to hide the ugly chain link fence that we have in this yard. Also create a sense of privacy and a sense of um, kind of discovery as you walk around the garden. I, I don't want you to be able to see everything from every vantage point. So with that in mind, I'm hoping to use the two elderberry shrubs as some sort of um, kind of coverage slash um, privacy slash creating a sense of what's around this corner with those two shrubs. So let me turn the camera around. I'm standing up here at my side porch. This is where I spend a lot of time and I want the view from this porch to be lovely. That's my primary consideration. I haven't moved and this is what I see when I look down at the bottom. So let me zoom a bit. Okay. So right here, we have a gate in the chain link fence and here is a corner in the chain link fence. And then the fence comes up along this way. We've got the arborvitaes that have started. They will eventually uh, grow together, mostly. Um, so this area that's kind of right in here is what I'm targeting for those elderberries. All right, I'm down here a little bit closer now. A little bit easier to see. So we've got the three arborvitaes here. They will eventually grow so that they're almost touching each other. Um, so that'll, but only at the bottom part. The top part will still be separated. Uh, and let's see. So this gate here is what I want to kind of hide. We've got the Cherokee Princess dogwood. It's still small. It'll eventually grow into a nice big dogwood tree. Um, so that'll provide top cover. And so what I'm interested in is hiding from here back. I want to be able to stand here in this yard and look down here and not see that gate. Also not really see that path. I want that path to be hidden so that it's a sense of discovery as you walk through the arbor and around that path. I would like this to be blocked. So with that in mind, I'm considering a placement for these elderberries like this. Put the um, Instant Karma one, which is the variegated foliage, six to eight feet tall and wide uh, in this space to fill up this whole space right here. If it grows to be six feet tall, that'll be about, oh, about right here. And that would be a really big shrub. I don't think it's gonna get there anytime soon. Maybe in the third year, maybe. I don't know really what to expect, but it's gonna be small for a while. But I think I think the, where the can is sitting right now is not quite right yet. I think it needs to move that way, uh, but it's close. I think that would be a nice spot for it. And then the black lace elderberry is currently sitting in the can right behind it. And I'm thinking that if the Instant Karma one moves over there, sorry, not black lace, laced up, move this one over about a foot and kind of center it between here and here, and then put the black one um, kind of like right there. I think we're close to a nice um, arrangement. Okay, uh, yeah, that is looking like it might be better. I do like the Instant Karma elderberry in this location for sure. I'm gonna put it in the ground and then I'm gonna decide if this is the spot for the black lace. I think it's gonna be good because if it gets to be six to 10 feet tall, that'll bring it up like up to this tall. And if it's two to four feet wide, it'll be this big column here. And it, it combined with the arborvitae combined with this rounded um, elderberry, I think that'll be lots of privacy for back there at that gate and around this path. From behind the arbor, it looks nice too because um, it, if this is a big ball full of shrub and then this is a tall column from this location in the path It'll kind of block a little bit of this view here and this view here and uh, When you come up around this way if they're both tall six to eight feet tall Then standing here you won't be able to see the top of the yard and it'll be this little private cubby hair area down here And then we can do some sort of really interesting um, private garden, little secret garden kind of sense down here. Now, also over here, this is where I am considering putting in the red twig dogwoods, um, pulling them away from the fence by about three feet and three feet apart from each other. 
And I think it'll be a nice hedge right here. Um, in the summer, it'll be have nice leafy greens. Uh, they get three to five feet tall and wide. So um, it, I think this fence here, uh, when I stand here, it looks like it's about four and a half feet tall. So hopefully these will grow into the big shrubs to cover up a lot of this fence. Um, and when you stand up at the porch and look down here, you can see these shrubs through these two trees. Let me get over here, you can see. And so um, this line of shrubs being right here uh, helps to block the, uh, more of the fence and more of the gate from view. So I think that is gonna be the location for those. My only concern is that this one is in a lot more shade than the other two. This one might not grow as fast or might not color up as the same as the others, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. The other option is that I could take this third one and move it to like right there. Uh, should I do that? Maybe I'll do that. Let me try it out and see what it looks like. So I've moved the one that was here over to there. Um, I might, I might use this location for them because I'm concerned about the shade over here. We, this is only part sun. Um, it never gets full sun and a few hours a day it gets direct sun, but most of the time it's dappled shade. So I'm thinking that over there is going to be better than over here. From here, these look nice as well. This will be just this big shrub border then. Um, these are all deciduous. So in the winter, all five of those will not be showing any leaves, but the red twigs will have their red coloration on them. So yeah, I think that's gonna work. And then we have the azalea here still and uh, hostas and stuff. And, and we'll be filling in with more perennials and things. Now the proudberry coral berry, I think I'm gonna put right here. It gets three to five feet tall and wide. And this will be in center of these two cryptomeria, which as they're still growing, they haven't yet touched. And so this will grow and help again, hide more of the fence from the top part of the yard. And remember, there's gonna be a rose right here on an obelisk that'll be about five feet tall. So that uh, shrub over there will be a nice structural element. Um, in addition to that obelisk right there. And then we've got the hydrangea over here. We've got the pyrocantha on the fence, which will help cover that fence. And there's a clematis over here on the fence that is just a baby. It hasn't started to grow yet. So we're getting there. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put all these into the ground today. Um, and I'm going to, I don't have to spread, or I don't have to put any compost in their planting holes because we've already spread compost in all of these planting areas. I will use Biotone Starter Fertilizer and I will water them in very deeply as soon as they're in the ground. happy with the progress that we're making in the back garden today. Um, this last step of getting this sod removed and getting that mulch put in place really, really was the step that really made my vision of this whole thing come to life. So um, I'm just so excited about it. So let me just show you what we've got. All right, so the coral berry is in and it's gonna be really pretty. It's got really pretty leaves on it, different from a lot of other shrubs in that they're very oval, almost round. They, I mean, they remind, and they're very tender, very tender leaves. They remind me a lot of what um, columbine leaves feel like. They're just so tender and green and um, really soft edged. And I really like the way that looks. And I'm hoping that, I don't think it's gonna grow to three to five feet this year, but I'm hoping that we get a couple of feet on that and it'll be a really nice little addition and maybe even get some berries in the fall, maybe. And then over this way, we've got the three Arctic Fire red twig dogwoods in place. Um, I think that's gonna be a really nice screening for here and also uh, for up from the um, porch, you'll be able to see it through those arborvitaes. That laced up elderberry, it really disappears in the dark mulch, doesn't it? But as soon as it puts on a little bit of growth, we'll have a nice little dark, almost black element in this section of the garden. That'll be nice. And then the instant karma elderberry here with its beautiful variegated foliage, it's really gonna be a lovely, lovely, lovely tree. I'm very, shrub, excuse me. I'm very excited by it. 
looking at that stuff from up here you can see between these two shrubs you can see those dogwoods there so that'll be nice have that uh, greenery there and then in the winter that red peeking through those trees and then down in this area you can't really see them because they're so tiny but the black lace sorry laced up is right there and so it'll grow up right kind of beside and behind this arborvitae and then the instant karma is right there and it'll be a nice eventually it'll be like this big and then back in there that's where the coral berry is and it's not going to be very visible once the elderberries are up but uh, it'll be a nice addition to that section of the garden it's been a long hot day in the garden i think we got up to 90 or 91 or something like that today and it's more humid than it has been so it's been a really really wonderful day to work in the garden although pretty sweaty i am grimy and filthy but i'm still working so i wanted to show you what what I'm just doing. I have these trays of Cosmos that I started from seed. I started them way too early and uh, they've been sitting and languishing in these cell packs for way too long. Um, and so I decided to get them in the ground. So I'm putting them in here to see how spindly they are. I'm going to put them all in the ground. I'm going to water them all in really nicely and then I'm going to um, pinch them all off above their bottom leaves and hopefully that will encourage them to branch up and grow into uh, better looking plants. While I'm here, look how ineffective my cicada netting has been. I retied this one three times to try to eliminate any place where they could get in. And yet, look how many are inside the netting. So I'm just gonna take this off and uh, hope that they don't kill my, kill my shrub. And that's the story on several of my wrapped shrubs as well. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So I'm really frustrated with that. I found a winter sowing container of columbine and the plants are ready to be put into the ground. So I'm going to put them over here on the south side of our yard in this little shade garden that I very rarely show, but let me give you- Here a we are, we're outside our sunroom. So we often sit in there and look out onto this tree line here. And uh, this shade garden in these strange rock wall formations um, really is pretty neglected. But we've got some woodland phlox here, some brunera, two different types, or at least two different plants. I think they're the same. I think they're both Jack Frost, if I'm correct. They could be Alexander's Giant, but I'm not sure. And then over here, I always forget what this is called. Darn it. Uh, I don't remember. And then, uh, I don't know what that is either. Sorry. Um, I did plant all these things about four or five years ago. Some of them took, some of them didn't. There's lots of holes over here still. But I think that these columbine are gonna be nice in here. These are Biedermeyer mix, and these are um, seeds that I collected from my own garden last spring. These seeds were sown pretty thickly and I never thinned them. So there's lots and lots and lots and lots of seedlings all mingled in. I'm just gonna do like an inch square and however many plants that is, they'll just all go in the same hole. Well, I was able to separate that whole um, container full into 17 separate clumps. And I do believe that there's one or two plants in most of these clumps, like this is just one, but there's, I don't know, there's definitely two plants in this one. So, you know, some of them are singles and some of them are doubles, actually. I think this one's a triple. But yeah, that's how I'm gonna plant them in these little plugs like that. Right. So there's 17 clumps of Biedermeyer mix columbines here. And if, you know, half of them die, it's okay. If all of them die, it's okay, because these were grown from seed from my other plants and they are setting seed right now again. So I'm more where that came from if these don't work out, but maybe they will. I don't know, we'll see. This is every morning occurrence. We come out and we sweep the cicadas off of the porch. And then we do it again every time we come onto the porch. Yeah, nasty. Out here on my morning walk around, looking at what needs water, what's doing well. These hydrangeas along here are already drooping on the day, and we're going to get up to 93 today. Rain expected tonight, but they're drooping right now, so I'm going to give them some water. Good morning. It's Sunday morning. It's kind of late morning, actually. And I'm just out here. I've already done a walk around in the backyard with the hose, putting some water on the annuals. Today we're supposed to get up to 93 degrees, I think. And uh, I think we are expecting rain over the next day or two, but things are looking droopy and dry. So 
and putting some water on some things that really need it so that they don't die or fry in today's heat. Um, so I just thought I'd give a little look around the yard and show you all what I see when I walk around my yard on a morning. So let me turn around. Here we go. All right. I always start up here and I just start right here and I just walk around the circle. So um, I've put some water onto the dahlias. I do have a little bit of rabbit damage, I believe, on these dahlias. You can see they've been eaten off. I had pinched it back and uh, so something ate the tips, actually the whole leaf here in here. Those were leaves when I pinched them. And you can see, I think I've got some, uh, probably, that's probably slug damage. So I'm going to put some sluggo around here. Uh, but in general, these are the ones that I planted from seed, and they're doing well. This is a tuber that I planted, and this is a tuber that I planted. Um, and they're both doing well. And in fact, there's buds on this big one right here. So that's exciting. That's been pinched a couple of times already. So I'm going to go ahead and let those buds come on. So the dahlias are looking really strong, I think. That's good. These are the sugar snap peas. And, um, you know, our weather is getting too hot for them already. They haven't really done much. I do see a couple of flowers in there. But I think I planted them a few weeks too late to really get any really good peas off of these. Limelight is coming right along, putting out a lot of new growth. I don't see any buds on it yet, but it's early yet. Sweet peas. Nothing happening on the sweet peas. Again, I think we're too too late to plant them. Mary, uh, no, Fairy Rose is doing wonderfully. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted when I planted this rose. Gets all these little um, sprays of little mini flowers, and they're so sweet. They're just so dainty and sweet. They're self-cleaning for the most part, and... Um, It'll just continue to grow and grow and grow and bloom and bloom and bloom all summer long. So I love my fairy roses. I've got one here and two out in the front. Okay, let's see. I planted some basil in here and um, they're not doing so hot. I do put water on them pretty much every day. You can see the one on the right has put on, actually not put on any growth since I planted it. The one on the left, you can't even really see anymore. So, yeah, basil, not so great. I might retry on that. Okay, these shrubs are doing fine. Blue Point Spruce, not spruce, Juniper, doing well. The lilies that I tucked in back here, they're all living. Uh, I don't expect the one on the right to bloom at all because the deer ate the top off of it. But the ones on the left, uh, they might bloom, they might not. We'll see. These shrubs here doing fine despite uh, the appearance of the cicadas. We'd get cicadas on them all the time, um, like this little guy right there. Um, but actually, one cicada on a shrub is nothing. Wait till I show you later what we've got going on. Snapdragons here, eh, they're all right. I, th I think I planted them too late. I need to fertilize them. Marigolds are doing fine. Unfortunately, I don't really like marigolds. If you know of a marigold color that's more buttery, and less neon, let me know. I want to grow them next time. Uh, the tomato plants are doing fine. They've both got um, flowers on them, and I'm not sure if they've been pollinated yet or not. We'll see. Strawberries in these pots are doing great. I put water on them every day, sometimes twice a day. They do dry out pretty quick in this terracotta, but I've got, um, I've got uh, flowers and a couple of young berries there, so that's exciting. We'll be enjoying a couple of strawberries later. <laughs> Dave and I can each have one. Green beans coming along, putting on new growth this week. That's good. Glads, they're tucked in there, covered with cicadas. But I don't think they're being damaged by the cicadas. I think they're just being covered by them. This boxwood, it's doing all right. Although you can see all, all the cicada carcasses on it. Those are the nymph shells. They're very much like shrimp shells when you have peel and eat shrimp. Uh, this one, I re-wrapped um, it for a third time. I thought I did great and I still have cicadas on the inside of it so I'm planning to unwrap it. Uh, same story on this one. Sorry that's what did I say that's the camellia and this is the fragrant tea olive. Both of these shrubs I've re-wrapped uh, three times. Well I wrapped it once and then re-wrapped it twice 
and still I get cicadas on the inside so I'm just gonna take it off uh, these hollies also I rewrapped twice still covered so frustrated with that um, I put the nepeta in the ground the other day it's uh, flowering yay so it seems to like that spot um, more snapdragons here they're gonna flower soon I did cut th uh, pinch these back and uh, they're gonna have more than one flower per stalk some of the other ones in the yard I didn't pinch coming over this way here we're in the morning Sun section um, snapdragons here I did pinch so they're gonna have more than one flower stalk also some things I put in the ground recently they're coming along uh, the specifically that penstemon I put in recently and uh, I'm keeping it wet so that it doesn't droop as it's in its new home um, I just can't get over how happy I am with this garden cut out and finished yesterday yay uh, I don't think there's much to look at back here but let's just take a peek see if anything needs water see if anything is struggling at all uh, yeah, things look okay here. This hydrangea probably could stand to get a little bit of water, but it's not drooping, so I'm gonna let it go for today and just count on the rain. All right, yep. I did water some of these things this morning. My new plants I watered last night, like 15 hours ago, so I think they're gonna be fine until they get rain tonight. Dogwood, uh, there are cicada carcasses on the bottom side of the netting, but I don't see any inside the netting, so I'm happy about that. Maybe there's one or two in there, but that's okay. All right, this clematis is done blooming its first flush of bloom, and it's going to do another flush. It's currently growing up, getting longer. It'll probably do some foliage growth, and then it might put out another flush of blooms later in the fall or late summer. Annuals here, I put water on them this morning. They're doing fine. This cardinal flower, Lobelia, I had cut. It was a big two gallon container and I cut it into fourths. I just ruthlessly chopped up the root ball and uh, it's really struggling to survive our heat right now, but I water it twice a day to keep it wet. And I'm hoping that enough of the roots survived intact that I didn't kill it completely. We'll see. Uh, everything else here is doing all right. I do water it very frequently, especially the annuals. Some of the perennials I don't worry about watering as much, especially like those um, hyssops. They, you know, they're drought tolerant, but not while well, they're still babies. So I am giving them water. Things along here looking fine. Ranunculus. Uh, there's, uh, I think, rabbit damage on a lot of them. And actually, ooh, I was going to say I have no buds, but... I just saw for the very first time, looky here, yay! So hopefully if the rabbits leave me alone, I'll get at least one flower and look back here. There's another one back there. So yay, two ranunculus buds. I think there are 12 plants here, maybe eight. I don't remember how many plants there are here, but um, yeah, they were not a, a, a resounding success for me, but I'm going to continue to baby them. Hopefully they'll give me some flowers. The lavender is in full bloom right now. It's doing well. I've got both Munstead and Hidcoat varieties here, and I honestly don't remember which one is which. Um, and I was just growing them side by side so that I could see which one I liked better. And to be truthful, I'm not going to look and see which one's which. I'm just going to evaluate them based on how they're growing, and then I'll decide which one I like, and then I'll look at the tags but they're both blooming fully right now. So that's nice. Uh, moving up the way, African daisies that I started from seed. They look so scraggly, but they're starting. Oh, look, here's a bud on this one. They're just starting to go to bud, that one there. And I think the other ones I can tell by the leaf structure, they're coming along behind as well. So we'll be getting some flowers. It's just a matter of whether I like the way the plants end up looking. They look really shabby, both them and the ranunculus over here. This is not exactly, uh, you know, flower power annual planting here. Okie dokie, let's see, the kale's doing fine. It's going to be curly leaved and it'll be nice and big and tall. Broccoli's done. I took it inside so I could pull those plants out. Sorry for the high contrast video here. Uh, back in the here, we've got the 
uh, bottle brush it's doing fine it's been covered with cicadas but I do see new growth coming out on it so that's good that azalea seemed to survive the transplant just fine two ladies mantles uh, I might have said before that I've had trouble with ladies mantles in the past but these two are doing fine in this dappled sunlight location they never get full sun they only ever get this much dappled light or full shade and they seem to like this location a lot better than where I had them before um, columbines doing great putting on growth and one of them actually flowered so that was nice um, astilbes th these were transplanted from down in the lower part of the garden and they're both doing well I do need to keep water on them because sometimes they get droopy um, the bleeding hearts have done their job for the season I expect them to live a little longer but then they will die back in our heat English daisies that I planted from seed in my winter sowing project, they're putting on a little bit of growth. They spent a week or two just rooting in, I imagine, and now they're putting on a little bit of growth. So we'll see what happens with those. It might be nice if they actually turn into something. These are perennial in my area. And then, um, let's see, camellia. Uh, again, there's tons and tons of cicadas inside my netting here and also over on... Oh, gosh, and here come the cicada noise. Uh, over on the um, Pieris. So my cicada netting project has been failing me and I'm really frustrated by it, but it is what it is. All right, and these are the Cosmos I put in last night. I trimmed them back off camera and I've been keeping them wet. Hopefully they'll grow. I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, liquid fertilizer on them, give them a little boost. These are Verbena firehouse I think is the variety not the variety uh, the brand um, and they're doing really well I like that color Japanese bottle brush plants there are lots of green on them I don't see any buds yet but they're doing well and then the Editha rose lilies are both all three of them are popping up one of them's back there under a hosta but they're all coming up now good I've got some containers here of leftover alyssum that I started from seed, so I just popped them in a couple of containers, letting them sit here until they grow bushy and pretty. Uh, and then the two citronellas here, again, I'm just siting them here while I, they're easy to water, and when they get a little nicer looking, I'll move them into a more decorative location. These snapdragons are ones, they're getting ready to go to bloom. In fact, I see blossoms going to probably open today on a couple of them. Uh, these I forgot to pinch, and so each of these is only going to give me probably one flower stalk. But again, snaps from seed. I've never done it before. This is my first experiment with it. Um, I think I've learned enough to do them better next year. Um, carrots. I was running a carrot experiment. This one on the left is the one that I planted in bagged potting soil and the one on the right is what I planted in straight compost. And the compost ones are really struggling. They are not doing anything very nicely at all. The ones in the bagged compost are growing. So um, I learned that the bagged compost is better than straight compost. <coughs> Excuse me. Bagged <coughs> Sorry, bagged potting soil, not bagged compost. All right, Candy Tuft. These are the two new plants I put in this year. They're still blooming a little bit. And then the, this plant and the one up there are the ones that I've already had in my garden, and they're just about done. They need to be deadheaded and cut back so that they'll flush out a little bit more plant. Uh, but I'm very happy with the Candy Tuft. Here are some more ranunculus. Uh, there are seven in this location, and um, I'm not seeing any buds on these yet, but... I'm not giving up hope. Hopefully they will give me some buds. Uh, along the way here, there are three cat mint. These are um, Nepeta walkers low. I've dug and divided this plant into many, many, many pieces, and they just are such wonderful performers. So uh, they're doing well here. I got four habanero pepper plants here, and on each of them, I do see little flower buds. So that's a good sign. Uh, the iris, they're looking beautiful today. We've got one here that's got a beige top and a purple fall. And then over here, we've got one that's got a purple top and a beige fall. So I like those nice together. The white one, white and pink one in the back, is just about done. So we've had a really nice iris season. And you can see, we'll go to it in a minute, but back over that way, uh, there are some more that are just about done. All right, it's looking good out here, guys. It's looking really good. A still bees here. This is the only time of day they get full sun and that hydrangea, same thing. But in this two hour block, they get a lot of sun and they often need to be watered because 
they droop and suffer. Spirea is putting out its first blooms with lots of buds still coming. All right, so oh, let's take a peek over the fence, the courtyard. Things are looking nice out here as well. The container garden is thriving here. Um, everything is really doing well, so I'm very happy with that. And then the garden beds, uh, the mini pearl is stealing the show right now. She's blooming everywhere. She's got these beautiful white flocks heads on her. and It's just lovely. I love mini pearl. So the foxgloves are doing really, really well. Uh, these are ones that I've grown from seed for a couple of generations of them, and, and I really like them in this corner. And this season I've planted a lot of foxgloves around the yard as well. I've got some down by the arborvitaes for next spring, and I've got some over here on both sides of the fence, kind of near the tomatoes over that way. And so they're both doing well. So that's good. All right, let's go up this way. Bubblegum, doing well. Lots of perennials in this bed that are coming along. Okay, let's look at these irises one last time. You probably won't see them on camera after this because they're just about done, but they've been so pretty. I love them. I think this is called Blowing Kisses, if I remember correctly. Um, the other ones over this way, I don't know what the variety names are called because when I bought it, it was four different, um, four different irises in the mix and it was just called Pink Mix. So I don't know variety names on those over there. Sorry. But I do love that it's iris season and things are so pretty. I love these. Just so nice. I should really deadhead them and they'd look nicer. All right, let's see what else we have. Over here, this is all just green and cicada infested. Uh, the daffodils are starting to die back. That's good. Phlox is coming on. Daisies coming on. I see buds on some of the daisies. That's good. Um, this is a butterfly weed with the cicada sitting right up on top of it. Uh, yeah, more daisies. Contorted hazels doing all right. Uh, my hosta in my container back there is doing well. I've been able to keep it wet enough to be happy, so that's good. Things in here are pretty much just green and a little bit messy. I do plan to rearrange this bed this year, um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. All this spider work, I think I'm going to move out. Um, it was fine when and there was nothing else in this bed, but now that I've got lots of other things, it's just too messy looking. And everything in here is just a jumble. So I want to make it look a little bit more organized and more planned. But Sweet William's doing well. The Sorry, Sweet Woodruff. I always get that mixed up. Sweet Woodruff's doing well. He's putting out his blooms. Um, hostas, hostas. That peony was really nice. This container's doing well. It's a little wobbly looking, but it's fine. Um, I had planted some bare root of stilbies in here, and three of them of the four have done well. So that's good. Uh, let's see, there's one right there, and one here, and one here. So those are called Sunny Boy. I got those from Walmart, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, turning this way. Um, those are looking pretty good. Um, this pot has a um, volunteer Japanese maple that my friend gave me out of her front flower bed. And it came along with some bishop's weed, it looks like. These hostas are doing great. I've been using sluggo to keep the slugs off of the leaves. And I've been concentrating on the more decorative hostas. So like this one, you can see it doesn't have any slug damage. It's got lots of leaf litter, tree litter on it. but. No slug damage. This one, I didn't put sluggo around it as much, and there are some leaves that have some slug damage. So the sluggo stuff works. It's organic, so that's good. Actually, I don't think it's sluggo brand, but it's iron phosphate-based slug bait. It's working well. This is a guacamole hosta that was new last year, and it's starting to grow big this year. That's good. Boxwood's doing all right. Bruner is doing great. Um, Astilbe's here, getting their first little dose of morning sun. And then they're in shade all day, so they like it. Japanese fern. Everything along here is just looking really nice. All right. Good, 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 good. All right, so that's my morning walk around. I, I do this every morning after I've fed the dogs while I'm having my coffee. I often have the hose with me so that I can, um, you know, put some water on things that need it. Uh, but I always look and see how things are looking, what's growing, what's struggling. And it's just really a peaceful time. So I hope you've enjoyed this walk around our backyard today. Uh, I'm going to stick this into my weekend update video. I'm not going to put it out as a separate one. Um, usually on a weekday morning, I also go around the whole yard. 
uh, probably two or three times a week I do that, but every morning I do the whole backyard circuit. So anyway, um, today, Sunday, uh, I wish I could spend it all in the garden today, but I've got some obligations in the mid afternoon. So I'm going to do some things inside unrelated to the garden until maybe late afternoon and maybe around three o'clock I'll be able to get back out. Although that's the hottest part of the day. Do I really want to do that? I don't know. We'll see what happens anyway. So, um, I'll be back in touch with you very soon. See you in a bit. You hear that? These are really loud. These are so loud that when I'm sitting on my side porch, I can't hear the bubbler fountain. And when Dave and I are sitting beside each other, I can't hear him talk. It's really loud. I read in an article, uh, I believe it's in the Washington Post. I'm not sure where I read it. Uh, but anyway, the decibels, is like 88 decibels um, currently. I don't know where that was measured, but I believe that here. I mean, we have a window unit going in our upstairs of our house. I can hardly hear it over the sound of these cicadas. So... I'm going inside because this is not healthy for my ears. So I'll see you later. Hi friends. It's Sunday night. The cicadas are really loud and it's really hot out here. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time out here. I've been inside working very busily on the obelisk. It's in place. Um, it's temporarily in place. I'm going to have to get some bricks or pavers or something to put under the feet and level those out so that it stands level in that uh, very sloped flower bed that it's currently sitting in right now. But I love it. Look how it looks behind that, um, behind the arbor. Isn't it great? Ah, the rose that's going to go climbing on that is going to be uh, shipped to me hopefully tomorrow or at least the week of tomorrow which means sometime this week I'm really hoping that I receive it by this coming weekend so I can get it in the ground and have it in place for the rest of the summer um, so we're going to have a rose on the obelisk and we're going to have a rose on the trellis arbor whatever you call it and a clematis on the other side of the arbor so it's going to be very very focal pointy down here now you might see that the uh, arbor and the obelisk are not they're aligned with each other but they're not aligned with the power pole well oh well my plan is that eventually i won't really see that power pole very much it's not in a good centered place in our yard and so it is what it is it's where it is i can't change it obviously so um so yeah, I'm hoping to put roses in places so that people's eye are drawn to the beauty, not to the power pole. So this is the summary. Oh my gosh, they're so loud. So this is the end of the video for this weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't yet looked at the before and after of our yard, you might want to check out those early, early videos in this backyard renovation series because the changes have been really dramatic. So I think I'll close with some sweeping video shots that match up with the pictures from the very first video. And um, it's been a dramatic change this summer. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will come back and visit, maybe hit that subscribe button, you know, all that stuff. And I would love to have you along for the ride as we continue to garden here at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, friends. Bye-bye.